Friends, welcome to our homestead. We're here in our barn, something serious to talk about today. I've never seen a confluence of different challenging issues like this before, just coming to a head all at the same time. And I think this November is really going to be, there's gonna be a huge spark that ignites a lot of things. But it's not just about politics and whatever that is. We're gonna talk about why you should be putting a plan together for your family right now. Let's talk about it. Well, friends, we decided to put together a plan for our family about nine years ago, and we started off on our homesteading journey after leaving the city. And I would highly recommend all of you, if you're on the fence, to let this be that push for you to push you over the fence and to move your family in a planned and orderly fashion. Don't go off half cocked and just go crazy. But, you know, right now it's good for us to think about cutting things out of our lives that are just unnecessary. Maybe it's a house that's, you know, just way too big for you and it's just, you have rooms that you don't even use and stuff that you don't even use and you have a storage unit with things in it that you haven't seen in years. Just cut it loose. If you can sell it, sell it. Get rid of it. Get it out of your life. Because friends, in the end, stuff doesn't mean anything, especially if it's not benefiting your family in any way that moves your family forward toward self-sufficiency, toward food self-sufficiency, toward helping others who are less fortunate, etc. But friends, I've been paying attention to uh, politics for about 30 years, and I've never seen political strife in our country like this before. Now I know it happens in other countries and those of you watching from other places are like, you Americans have no idea what you're talking about because you have it so good. Well, you know, yeah, we do still. However, underlying, we are better hiding corruption than the rest of the world, honestly. It is so rotten underneath that the things that are being done to the American people right now are what has been done to other people for a long time in other countries, banana republics, and it's going to come to a head and Americans aren't gonna put up with it. And that's the scary part. They're, not, they're gonna only get pushed so far or they're gonna get pushed against each other where these political tensions break out into something horrible. And I think that's coming down the pipe. So where's that gonna happen the most? In the cities, right? That's why I want you out of there. You know, we see these lawless cities. I've never seen lawlessness in, like, in cities before, like I've seen recently. All these things called street takeovers. You know, when we were kids, growing up in Detroit, yeah, we did drag racing, right? Maybe not me, because I didn't have money for a nice car, but I knew people with fast vehicles. And we, we would go off on a side road where there wasn't any cops and people would be looking out and people would just drag race. Sometimes it was for a little money. But what's happening now with these street takeovers where there's hundreds or a thousand people in the middle of an intersection in a major city just doing donuts, which are fun. I like doing donuts. Maybe I've done them before. They are doing them in stolen vehicles and just trashing the vehicles. And you know, people are injured when they're hit with those vehicles and they're you know, smashing store windows and they're taking over this whole intersection and nobody can drive through it. The other day, it was, I think it was Philadelphia. One lone police cruiser pulled up to a street takeover. There, was, there had to be a thousand people there. They swarmed his vehicle. And this is happening more and more. I see it all the time. This was just the one from the other day. They swarmed his vehicle, got on top of his vehicle, and there was nothing that cop could do about it. I don't know what ended up happening to him. Maybe he called back up, maybe a few other cops showed up. I don't know. He didn't have enough ammo in his vehicle to defend himself against everybody there if that's what was going to take place. Luckily, that didn't take place. But if they wanted to rip him to shreds, they could have. And they damaged the vehicle, of course, the police car. And you and I, taxpayers, pay for that. They're not paying their taxes. 
So what do they care? They're just tearing things to shreds and I've never seen this before, all right? It, this is unprecedented, unheard of. This happens in, you know, third world countries, which ours is becoming, in my opinion. It's out of control. So I want you to do everything you can. Maybe you live in the, that type of area, maybe you don't, but do whatever you can right now to get out of that situation. Even so you don't have to even drive through that situation. The cop came upon those people. What if you and your family came upon those people? What are you going to do? Let's talk about money and economic hardship. Friends, I know all of you are hurting and I want to hear it from you in the comment section below. How many of you are really struggling right now financially? Because I know it's got to be a lot. You know, there's 381,000 people on this channel, and I know many people have got to be struggling. So I want you to look at that. I want you to look at downsizing if you can. If you're struggling and you have, you know, assets in terms of a house or a car, expensive cars, whatever it is, get rid of them. Cut it out of your life. Cut the fat, get rid of it, downsize, small home in the country, a little bit of property where you can grow food for your family, you know, get a cheaper, uh, cheaper right now, car that is uh, maybe more practical and more reliable, whatever it is. You need to do that right now. Look, friends, the economic collapse that's coming is like nothing you've ever imagined. Nothing. We put the United States government goes into debt another trillion dollars a trillion dollars is added to the national debt every 100 days, and that's accelerating. Do you know how long it would take you to make a trillion dollars? If you made a dollar a second, a dollar a second, that's a lot of money, right? Dollar a second, every single day, it would take you over 31,000 years to make one trillion dollars. The U.S. government spends and adds to the debt a trillion dollars every 100 days, or actually, that's the interest on the debt, sorry the interest on the debt, they're spending more than that. Just the interest on the debt is a trillion dollars every hundred days. That is unfathomable. If you made $75,000 a year, it'd take you 13 million years to make a trillion, one trillion. Our country's 35 trillion in debt, one trillion every hundred days being added on to that in interest, not including the spending. That is unsustainable. That cannot go on. Everybody just kind of has these blinders on and they get their coffee or their McDonald's every day and they go to work and they try to make money for their family, which is, you know, that's what you got to do. You know, the extra spending can go away, but you got to go to work every day, make money for your family, but you, you're not seeing what's going to happen. You got to look to see what's happening. You got to cut the fat out of your life, save, pay down your debt. Get rid of credit cards now. Everything you possibly can do now, as fast as you possibly can. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, right? I'm just telling you what we did and what I see, right? So you can do what you want, but I'm telling you, at those statistics, those are staggering numbers, and it cannot last, friends. You've got to move forward now. Friends, new vehicles are out of the price range of pretty much everybody. Car dealers can't sell them. They won't lower their prices. Car manufacturers won't lower their prices and they won't make cheaper versions of the vehicles. They are insane. They are greedy. They are out of control. They have completely lost connection with the American people and they're not giving them what they want. There are zero cars out there under, I think it's $20,000 for sale anymore. That doesn't exist. And there's only, I think, maybe two that are out there, brand new vehicles I'm talking, that are sub $30,000, between twenty dollars and $30,000. Getting a truck for a homestead, a new truck, is a Herculean task. Because, you know, manufacturers thought it was funny to put, you know, heated, heated and cooled seats and, you know, all this fancy computer electronics in a truck and people ate it up, bought it up. Well, now if I need a truck to do work, to pull my tractor, to do something like that, I got to go 20 years old on a truck, which is nuts. 
and they're still expensive. Car dealers are going to be going out of business like crazy. So hopefully that will send a crash happening through the car industry. Banks are actually repossessing vehicles from dealerships right now because those dealerships buy them on credit and the banks are not getting paid from the dealerships for the loans on those vehicles, those new vehicles sitting on their lots. Housing prices, of course, are still out of control. Now, hopefully those will start to come down a little bit. We'll see what happens. But housing insurance and car insurance are through the roof. Through the roof. Housing insurance is up 30% in the last five years. And it doesn't look like it's going to slow down at all because the valuation of the homes is still high. So what's that also do to your property taxes? Boom, up through the roof. This is unsustainable. Those costs are weighing on you and I as well. How long do you think it will be before things come crashing down? Huh? How long do you think it'll be? You know, people have kind of speculated about it for a while and it's been staved off through different means. Uh, for a little while and it happened in 08. It was pretty bad and now we're 15 years into the next cycle and it is the bubbles that have been pushed up and built up over those last 15 years since 08 are way bigger than 08. 08 was nothing and I lost my job back then and I couldn't find a job for six months and I barely had enough savings to pay my mortgage. What do you think is going to happen this time? I want you to go read some written blogs, some written accounts of what happened in Argentina in the, I think it was in the mid 90s. I might be wrong about that, but it was either mid 90s or maybe it was just around 2000 when their economy crashed. People were eating cardboard. No joke. Are you prepared in your life? through paying off debt and having maybe a little bit of food stored up, are you prepared to see things like that? To see family members going through that? I want you to share this video with them, to talk to them about these things because nobody's paying attention to it. Now, half my family is, the other half is not, sadly. They just keep spending money like drunken sailors. Let your instincts kick in about these things. This is not fear talk. This is preparation talk. Now, preparation prevents fearful situations, right? Because you've already prepared for it. And you might be able to prepare for it in several different ways. So if you're prepared in numerous different ways for a bad situation to happen, which is right in front of our faces, then that fear is alleviated and you are a little more calm and you're a little bit more, okay, well, I can help out a neighbor. I can help out a friend because I've done my due diligence and prepared for this situation because I was looking out for it. So friends, again, I'm gonna to reiterate to cut the fat. Cut the concerts, cut the extra, I don't know, clothes, cut the extra, um, car or trip or whatever it is, you know, the, the trim level on the, on the vehicle, if you can actually even afford to buy one. I'm just giving examples here, you know, cut, cut out the toys, cut out the jet ski, cut out the, you know, whatever it is. I don't know. There's a million things people buy, right? That they just do not need. Now, if you can pay for cash for those things, yeah, maybe, but why don't you just save that to help somebody out? This is, we're going to have to help each other out here because there's going to be so many needy people. And one of the ways that you can help friends and neighbors out is by learning how to grow your own food, preserving your own food, whether it's by an older method like canning or a new, newer method like freeze drying, you know, preserve some food that you can give away so you can help somebody else out. You know, it might seem like I talk about this a lot, and I do, and I'm gonna continue to talk about it. I'm gonna repeat myself all the time. Why? Because I have a singular focus to, to help people. By doing this channel and starting this channel years ago to just try to help people do little jobs and have little tricks of things to build or to fix or whatever it is, putting a solar system, whatever it is, raising chickens, 
I want you to go back and look through the archives of this channel if you need help, right? If you need help with any homesteading topic. Now, we don't do large animal husbandry here, but we do do a lot of chickens and a lot of gardening and smaller things like that. So if that is helpful for you, I want you to also share it with somebody who can benefit from it. Because that was one of my goals, was to help people with the knowledge that we had and we are um, learning. You know, I don't know everything, right? Help people with knowledge and help people by doing it yourself so you can get ahead, help somebody else, and then help that person to have that same mindset that they can be a little bit more self-sufficient so that they can help somebody else. Because when it comes down to it, nobody's coming to help from the government. Nobody is coming to help, right? It's gonna be you and I helping each other. And I think that's really important. So I want you as always to have a beautiful blessed day. And now I want you to check out these videos right here, which will help you to start to grow food for you and your family. Take care, see you in the next video, bye.